Krishna, uh, dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Actually, the lecture today is the 200th lecture I've given in the series, which began about uh, almost two years ago, all by Sri Prabhupada's grace. <laughs> Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastata Deshatarane. All glories to Sri Prabhupada, the revealer of the Dham. So, uh, in our last lecture, we discussed uh, Radha and Krishna's noonday pastimes at Radha Kund and their subsequent departures for um, Yavat and Nandagram. Now, other versions of the noonday pastimes state that um, after Radha and Krishna leave Radha Kund, they meet again at Surya Kund at uh, 3 p.m. The Asta Kaliya Leela Shastras mentioned that it's a, uh, a daily meeting. The Asta Kaliya Shastras are, are Goswami literatures that describe in detail the eightfold uh, daily pastimes of Radha and Krishna. But uh, daily doesn't necessarily mean every single day. They say it means most days. <laughs> and our Shastras specify that uh, Sunday is the day of Surya Bhagavan, uh, worshiping the sun god. So Radha and Krishna perform a special artik at Surya Kund on that day. So today I would like to begin by describing uh, in a little more detail uh, Radha and Krishna's pastimes at noon at Radha Kund and then their uh, famous pastimes later in the day at, at Surya Kund. I say famous because um, our beloved Raghunath Das Goswami has immortalized the uh, Surya Kund pastimes in his Braja Vilash Shtava, uh, text 88. He writes there, Seeing her father worship Surya Dev out of fear of the nearby Kamsa, Shimati Radharani, in the secluded place known as Santanu Pada, also earnestly worshipped Surya Dev to attain a certain youth whose complexion is as dark as a host of monsoon clouds, as her chosen husband. I pray that Surya Dev may protect us all. Raghunath Das Goswami. And um, Srila Narahari Chakravarti also glorifies these pastimes uh, at Surya Kund in his uh, Bhakti Ratnakara, verses uh, 585 to 587. <coughs> He writes, A Surya Kunda Grama Mora Nakya Haya Deka Surya Vigraha Vipini Surya Laya. This is Surya Kund village, also known as Morana. Just see the deity of the sun in the temple in the forest. Sakisaha Surya Puja Rai Mahasuke Krishna Purohita Haya Pujayako Tuke. Along with her friends, Radha went with great joy uh, for Surya Puja, and Krishna enthusiastically became the Purohita, means the priest. <coughs> uh, Krishna Prite Dhata, E Surya Dhaya Maya, Kahite Ki Mahima Kebana Aradhaya. Aradhaya. This Surya is the great giver of Priti towards Krishna. Hearing his glories, who will not worship Surya here? Very beautiful. So, <clears throat> first, uh, as I mentioned, we'll speak a little bit about their pastimes at Radha Kund, Radha and Krishna's pastimes, uh, at noon or midday. So, uh, Srimati Radharani, who's staying at Yavat, on the request of Jatila, uh, leaves Yavat to worship Surya Dev, the sun god, at Suryakund, on the request of Jatila. Jatila's reasoning is that uh, worshiping Surya Dev will increase Radharani and her husband, <laughs> Abhimanyu's uh, prosperity. But Sri Radha sees it as an opportunity to get out of Yavat to meet with Krishna. So on the way 
to Suryakund, she first uh, meets Krishna at Radhakund. Krishna has come from uh, herding the cows with his friends in the forest, as we explained the other day. Now the Acharyas say that sometimes Krishna arrives early at Radhakund and has to wait for her, but other times it's Sri Radha who has to wait until he arrives. And when he does arrive, um, very you know, beautifully dressed and ornamented, although he's been you know, in the forest with the cows, Sri Radha greets him with uh, great respect. She places a garland around his neck and she uh, puts sandalwood paste on his limbs. And in the summertime, when the heat is very oppressive, the divine couple uh, enjoy swing, pa swing pastimes together at Radhakund. And afterwards, they, they swim in the cool waters of, of Radhakund. And the Acharya is right as follows, and I'll quote here. Radha and Krishna's water sports may resemble the play of older children, but actually they are expressions of selfless love disclosed only to devotees with the deepest faith and a grasp of the sublime. Disclosed only to devotees with the deepest faith and a grasp uh, of the sublime. So after swimming, <laughs> Radha and Krishna come ashore and their friends dress them in fresh clothing and uh, flower decorations. Then they sit down for a game of dice. <laughs> and I was reading that Radharani, she rolls black dice and Krishna uh, rolls gold dice. <laughs> but Radharani is actually more skilled at throwing dice than Krishna. So although Krishna wins some throws, Radharani, Radharani almost always wins the game. And when she does, um, Krishna places the dice in her hands and he says, quote, Today the goddess of fortune has smiled upon you. I submit myself at your lotus feet, Sri Radha. <laughs> now as a result of all this um, activity, swinging and swimming and playing dice, uh, the, the divine couple get very hungry. So Srimati Radharani feeds Krishna a fruit which has been collected from a nearby forest by her maidservants, uh, savories which she has brought from home, and sweets that she personally prepared with her own hands earlier in the day. And after Krishna has eaten, Sri Radha and her sakis, the older girls, honor his remnants. And then the divine couple retire to a, a beautiful a jeweled temple at, at Radhakun to rest. And meanwhile, the, the Sakis also rest in their respective groves, which we've described many times, are around um, Radhakun. While the Manjaris, the, the, the very younger girls, they happily finish the remnants of the meal that was prepared for Krishna uh, by Radharani with the help of her maidservants before busying themselves to prepare for Radha's visit to uh, Suryakund. Whatever preparations are left over, the Manjaris get. And they do the last minute preparations before going to Suryakund. So after this break, um, I was reading, a parrot, a parrot suddenly arrives <laughs> at Radhakund with news that Abhimanyu and Jatila are on their way to find out why it always takes Sri Radha and her friends so long to get to Suryakund to worship the sun god. Hmm. Jyotila and Abhimanyu have received a message <laughs> that uh, perhaps Radha and Krishna are at Radhakund and maybe that explains why Radharani hasn't arrived yet at Suryakund, so they're on their way to pass by Radhakund. So the Acharyas, they write, it's very interesting, that this news is like a bucket of ice water tossed on Radha, Krishna, and the gopis, who all leap to their feet. So very quickly, Radha and her friends are off to Suryakund, and the Acharyas say, Krishna heads to Kunjara, to Kunjara, to change clothes, to appear like a celibate brahmachari priest. Now why is that? Well. We'll discover very quickly. So carrying the items with which to worship the sun god, 
Radha and the gopis um, are the first to arrive at a very beautiful altar at Suryakund, which stands in the center of a, a, a flower-filled grove within a forest of wish-fulfilling trees. That's how it's described. Uh, uh, of a flower-filled grove within a forest of wish-fulfilling trees. So Srimati Radharani and her maidservants, uh, they then sit down near the deity of Suryadev, the sun god. And they place gifts and items of worship on, on a silk cloth before the altar of the sun god. And they begin to sing uh, traditional songs that glorify the sun god. And then, a little while later, Madhu Mangal appears, along with Krishna, who is disguised as a Brahmana priest, a young Brahmana priest, a celibate, it said, <laughs> Brahmana priest. And Krishna is, uh, it's a disguise. Krishna is dressed in uh, white cloth, and his hair is tied up in a top knot, looking like a lifelong brahmachari. And a, a scarf also hangs from his neck, and there's a large red spot of tilak seen on his forehead. Uh, I was reading, his fingers are decorated with rings, and in his two hands are uh, kusha grass and a sacred book. And the Shastras say that he moves with an air of detachment. He's a renounced uh, Brahmana priest, disguised. So it's not long before Madhu Mangal notices the sweets that are waiting to be offered to, to Surya Bhagavan, to the sun god. So Madhu Mangal says, we should not keep the lord of the sky waiting. He refers to him as the lord of the sky. We should not keep the lord of the sky waiting for his worship or offering. Let us do the needful very quickly. <laughs> so Radharani nods in agreement to Madhu Mangal's proposal and offers a seat to Madhu Mangal and the uh, Pujari, who's approached to do the worship from Krishna, disguised as a priest. So then she places the, the tray of sweets into this Brahmana's priest's hands, into Krishna's hands, for offering, along with uh, gifts of um, garments and ornaments. Now at that very moment, Abhimanyu, who's sometimes called uh, Ayana, Ayana. He arrives with Jatila. And uh, it's mentioned that on the way to Suryakund, they didn't find Radha and Krishna at, at, um, at Radha Kund, but the whole way they had been speaking very harshly about Radharani. You know, this rumor, that rumor, how she's meeting Krishna, this, they're talking about all these in, in a very harsh way. But because they're now in the presence of, of a demigod, Surya Dev, the deity of Surya Dev, and uh, two Brahmanas, Madhu Mangal and the priest, <laughs> Chitila and Abhimanyu, they, they control themselves and, and sit down in a corner of the, of the courtyard to observe the, uh, the ceremony, the worship of the sun god. So Srimati Radharani, she acknowledges their arrival by bowing her head as um, disguised Krishna begins reciting mantras. As, as you do when you worship the deities, reciting mantras to the sun god. And while Krishna is doing that, Radharani becomes very nervous that her in-laws may recognize Krishna who's in this particular disguise. So she sits there, uh, it's mentioned, shaking with fear, not knowing what to expect. Now the other cowherd girls also sense some impending danger, and they whisper amongst themselves, Ayana will surely recognize Krishna's voice. What should we do? But Krishna is totally calm as he uh, chants mantras and prays of the sun, for he's very happy and very content to be with Radharani again so soon after their pastimes of, uh, at Radhakund. But seeing uh, Radharani's nervousness, Krishna comes up with a plan to calm her down as well as deal with um, Jatila and Abhimanyu's constant suspicions and, and criticisms of her. So how does he do that? What's his plan? So suddenly uh, Krishna makes his voice to sound as if it's coming from the deity. It, it 
vent ventriloquism, <laughs> the transcendental ventriloquism. <laughs> he makes his voice to sound as if it's coming from the deity, Suryadev. So the voice says, um, You, Radha, are as pure as my rays. Thus I cannot tolerate those who falsely accuse you of misconduct. O oh, chaste girl, no matter how many sacrifices you perform for me, in return for their sins, I will send death to your husband and ruin to Jatila, her relatives, her cows, and the people of her village. For their sins of always blaspheming Shimati Radharani. So then Shimati Radharani, uh, hearing this voice and understanding Krishna's intentions, she plays along by saying uh, to the deity, with folded hands I pray to you, my worshipable deity, whom I have served all my life. What will be my fate if my friends and relatives all die? My husband, Abhimanyu, is my life. If he dies, how can I live? My mother-in-law over there, Jatila, always treats me with affection. If she is destroyed, how will your Radha survive such a calamity? Oh, please, be kind to them. So, as Krishna in Suryadev's voice and Sri Radha uh, speak like this, Chitila and Abhimanyu, you know, they, they're standing there totally stunned, <laughs> described wide-eyed with their mouths agape, <laughs> hearing this. So, finally, the, the, the deity, the sun god, says, Krishna's voice, O chaste one, Sri Radha, your intense devotion to me is very pleasing. Therefore, rest assured that no calamity shall befall you if there's no more criticism going on. You, your husband, family, and friends are now safe. Be at peace. <laughs> so the condition was no more blasphemy, no more criticism, no more rumors. So as these words of reassurance from the deity of, uh, of, of um, Surya are spoken, Radha and Krishna, Krishna in disguise still, take their seats uh, very close to each other for the, to, to complete the offering. Mm -hmm. Radha's come there to worship, the priest is assisting, so they're sitting very close as they chant mantras to the sun god and offer um, incense, lamps, flowers, and garlands. And as they do so, it, the Shastra describes their heartbeats quicken and their love for each other shines brightly in their eyes. The priest and, the, and Srimati Radharani. And after the puja is uh, completed, Sri Radha addresses the deity, Surya Dei. She says, O Lord, if you are still my protector and well-wisher, after all I have asked, please throw me a flower just to indicate that what you said is true. Then I will be reassured. So as soon as she finishes speaking, the deity smiles, <laughs> shakes his body, causing all the offered flowers that, that are on him to fall like a shower to the floor. And all the gopis present, they jump to their feet and they joyfully cry out, Jai, Jai, Jai. Then while Madhu Mangal is trying to, you know, put all the offered sweets into his cloth, Krishna disguises the priest, goes to each gopi, places his uh, hands on, on their heads and blesses them with the words, may you be happy with your husband. May you be happy with your husband. Now Abhimanyu, who's relieved to, to, be, to even be alive now, <laughs> he sneaks away uh, with Jatila without being noticed and they head back to Yava. And on the, on the way home, he and his mother Jatila uh, they just start praising Sri Radha profusely <laughs> along the same road that not long ago they had accused her of terrible things and called her bad names. <laughs> so after arriving in Yava, Abhimanyu says to Chatila, Mother, never listen again to the advice of your foolish neighbors uh, who will be the death of me and never again fault your daughter-in-law lest the Lord ruin you. So as the two of them talked about um, all they'd seen and heard at, at Suryakun, they agreed not to speak about those things to anyone, 
but to, from that day on to simply praise Radha when she returned home, which didn't happen eventually, but <laughs> this is the fast time for that day. But um, Radha wouldn't be home immediately. She would be a little late in coming home that day. For after her husband and her mother-in-law, Jatila, had departed, she and Krishna returned to Radha Kund and continued their pastimes that had been, how would you say, rudely interrupted by Jatila and Abhimanyu. Remember, they had to leave quickly. And to free themselves from the, uh, the stress of the episode at, at Suryakund, they again uh, immersed themselves in the refreshing, refreshing uh, nectarian waters of Radhakund. And the, the Acharyas say that um, they were relieved of all stress by splashing their worries away in games of love. That's how they put it. By splashing their worries away in games of love. Now the Acharyas um, say that this pastime takes place every day. We've mentioned this principle before. But every time, it's like the first time. It's always fresh and new. And for us to always um, remain conscious of Krishna, Krishna consciousness, we should um, hear about, we should chant, remember, and repeat such pastimes over and over and over and over again. One devotee has written, <clears throat> and I quote, O swan of my mind, swim always in the waters of Namasankirtan. Play amongst the lotuses of Radha and Krishna's midday pastimes and reject thoughts of religiosity, wealth, sensual pleasure, and even liberation. Very nice. So Hare Krishna. Very sweet pastime at Suryakund, famous pastime at Suryakund. So we can finish today with, um, <clears throat> I've chosen three very beautiful prayers, calling upon um, the, the mercy of, of, um, of Krishna, and then, um, then Radharani, and finally uh, a prayer to the divine couple together. Well-known prayers, but very appropriate, I think, for today. Uh, the first is Bhiva Mongal Thakur in his Krishna Karnamrita. Uh, it's verse 104. He writes, Prem dan chame kamadan, chame vedanan chame. Baibhavan chame jivanam chame jivitam. Chame dhaivatan chame devanaparam. O Krishna, you and you alone are my worshipable deity the giver of love and the fulfiller of desire. You alone are the object of my knowledge, my power and wealth, my vital force and my very life. And Sri Raghunath Das Goswami prays in Vilapa Kushmanjali, very famous, verse 96, Tavai Vasmi, Tavai Vasmi, Najivami Tvaya Vina, Iti Vignaya Devitam, Nayamam charanam tikam to Sri Radha. O Radha, I am yours. I am yours. I cannot live without you. Please understand this and bring me to your feet. I am yours. I am yours. I cannot live without you. Please understand this and bring me to your feet. And finally, Srila uh, Rupa Goswami prays to both uh, Radha and Krishna. In his Gandharva Samparta, Nashtakam, verse 6. Tvatkunda Rorashi, Vilasapari Shramena, Svedambu Jumbi Bhara Nambu Rahu Shoyo Vam, Vrindavan Ishwari, Kadataru Mula Bhajajho, Samvi Jayami Chamari Chaya Chama Rena. O Queen of Vrindavan, when can I fan you with a yaktail fan, with a jeweled rod, when you and Sri Krishna are sitting under a tree? Your lotus-like faces, beautified by drops of perspiration from fatigue after your pastimes on the shore of your pond. Shirada Kund. 
Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Prabhus. As we always say, we'll do some more research and we'll be back in uh, a couple of days with more nectarian pastimes from the 12 forests of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Shri Shri Krishna Balaram Ki Shri Shri Radha Shama Sundar Ki Vrindavan Eshwari Shimati Vararani Ki Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Mayapur Dhamma Ki Shri Rapapapada Ki Go Premanandi Jai Jai Sisi si Radhe Shri Shri Kundaki <laughs>